Welcome na til Transilvanien. Ja heter Nora Vintila och jag är svenskalande guide i Rumänien. Jag jobbar på resebyrån Experience Transylvania, baserad i Sverige och vi anordnar kulturresor till Rumänien och Donauområdet. Och på våra resor har vi höjdpunkter som Transylvanien med Karpaterna och Dracula slott, men även mysiga städer vid Donaukanten som Bratislava, Budapest, Wien och andra härliga upplevelser som vinprovningar, ostprovningar och studieresor. Jag sitter just nu i staden Sibiu, eller Hermannstad på tyska, mitt i regionen Transylvanien eller Zibanburgen i västra Rumänien. Som ni kanske vet så är Transylvanien ett multikulturellt område med språk som tyska och ungerska utöver det officiella språket som är rumänska. Idag kommer jag att guida er genom ett mindre känt men fantastiskt fint område med härlig natur och fantastisk land i död, nämligen Säklerlandet. Och för att utforska denna region har vi på våra resor en värld utöver det vanliga, Greve Tibor Kalnoki, som tillhör en ungersk adelsfamilj med gammal tradition i Transylvania. Greve Tibor Kalnoki driver idag tillsammans med sin familj, med sin fru och sina barn, en herrgård och några världshus på sin familjs mark. Här kan man bo på ett genuint opretentiöst men ändå väldigt bekvämt sätt Bort från trängsel och från storstadsstressen. Vandringsutflykter, slottsmiddagar i musikmiljö, ett besök hos hovslagaren eller en traditionell matlagningskurs med typiskt transylvanska specialiteter kan göra er semester till ett minne för livet. Förutom att grevens familj erbjuder en genuin upplevelse med närodlad mat, autentiska boenden och med stor respekt för historia så gör de detta också på ett väldigt hållbart sätt med tanke på det lokala samhället. Världshusens kokar, städare, slottets guider och vandringsguiderna kommer alla från området. Dessutom så har familjen ett socialt projekt med fattiga romska familjer i byarna runt omkring för att hjälpa deras barn i vardagen. De romska barnen bjuds på en varm måltid och på ridskola efter undervisningen i skolklassen på vardagen. Alltså, världshusen och herrgården i Transylvanien respekterar principerna för ett schysst resande. Greve Tibor Kalnoki är nära vän till prinsen av Wales och han jobbar tillsammans med honom för att främja den transylvanska kulturen som båda anser som unik i Europa tack vare den starka länken mellan natur och människa som fortfarande kvarstår i denna del av världen. Hur kan man fortfarande se en harmoni mellan natur och människa en sammanlevnad som har tyvärr försvunnit på många ställen i Europa. Och detta vill både Greve Kalnoki och Prince Charles of Wales främja och bevara. Men vi låter till en början självaste Greve Kalnoki presentera sig själv och sin verksamhet. Sorry, my Swedish is very bad. The best, uh, the closest I can get to is German. My mother tongue is German. The, uh, the, the background story basically is that um, we, uh, we are one of the old families in Transylvania. I've been here um, quite a long time, we're from the medieval uh, times, but unfortunately under communism we had to leave and we had to live in exile. And uh, we, I came back 30 years ago to have a look what, it, what the old stones were like, because after communists, communists take, took over, they just pillaged and sacked everything. And uh, so we, we basically lost uh, all our property, all our cultural heritage. And uh, when I was about 20, I came back with my father to have a look at uh, the, the old stones, you know, what was left, the ruins of the houses. And I then made a vow that uh, if it would be possible at all, I would come back and, and uh, try whatever is possible to to renovate and to restore our, mainly our cultural heritage, really. So I was, I grew up in France, uh, have a, an English and German background also. My mother is German. 
and we were in England a lot. And uh, so I decided uh, when Ceausescu was ousted, the dictator, that I'd come back. And that's what I did. And for the last uh, 20 years, my God, I've been uh, in these little villages here and uh, reshaping bit by bit our cultural heritage. And this means basically a uh, three, three villages. It's like a triangle. And between these villages is a really lovely hilly landscape, which is located just underneath of the Carpathian Mountains. So it's basically the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains. And this landscape has not changed since, basically since my fam family was first documented here in, in the 1200s. It is a, the, a medieval cultural landscape, which is in perfect harmony between nature and, and man and, and humans. These are tiny little villages. Here in Nikloshwa, where I'm sitting right now, we have 500 inhabitants. Uh, the main village where, where our, our main house is has 2,000 inhabitants, and Zalan Patak, the third one, has just 100 stores. So my real passion is, is restoring, is uh, dealing with buildings and giving back the soul to the buildings. Because what we, what we found here when we came back was, was ruins, basically. The, the, the large houses, so we have two, two manors, uh, which are completely gutted, completely destroyed. Uh, we were lucky that we still had a, a roof on top. But what is very special here in Transylvania is that um, communism was basically, uh, it, it meant deep freeze for the medieval villages. So while, while France and Sweden and England, etc., cetera, um, industrially developed um, after, the, after the Second World War, Romania remained in a deep frozen state. And this is what is so special here. Um, the villages uh, haven't changed much for the, last, uh, for the last hundreds of years. If you see the, the background here, this is a, a stone house which I, I renovated, I restored. My la latest, uh, my latest baby, my latest project. Um, this is the village pub, which unfortunately has to be closed now because of uh, because of the situation. But uh, if you would have come, we'd all have uh, sat here and, and had a beer together or a, or, a, or a good wine. So as my passion is is restoring and giving back the soul to, to the buildings. Um, I decided to open the buildings that I was restoring um, to guests. Also, um, first of all, to make a living, of course, because we, we, we have to make a living from something, but also because I see um, having guests as, uh, as the real solution to, to support these villages. Because it, first of all, it opens a window to, to the true Romania, to the very special aspects uh, of Romania, especially that um, in, in the Western press, you, we always have a problem rather with, uh, with bad images. Um, and also to, to provide um, a sustainability for the villages themselves. So basically there are three villages. Here in Mikloshva, where you would have stayed, we have uh, we renovated uh, uh, houses in the village, which are now guest houses. In Mikloshva, there is a very charming little Renaissance manor house, a little castle, um, which you will see later on. Uh, Nora and Gloria will show you a, a little um, unprofessional video, but. Um, uh, I guess you, that you will see the, the essential bits. Um, in Zolantvatok, which is a tiny little hamlet of 100 souls, there um, uh, we, 
we renovated houses for the Prince of Wales, who asked me to, after he came here and, and he just fell in love with, with, uh, with the region and with uh, the way we were dealing with these buildings, he asked my wife and I to, uh, to create a little retreat for him also, where he could come once a year and just, um, just fill up his, his batteries uh, once a year. That is in Zalapatak which is really charming and completely isolated. Um, they're the most beautiful flower meadows coming out right now. And then uh, Valia Krishului, which is the, the third village. And there we have a, a larger house. We also have uh, uh, horses, lots of horses. I'm getting aware of how many they are right now in the corona situation because I have to feed 40 horses right now and uh, from there we have uh, riding holidays starting um, over a week week-long ride for uh, for experienced riders and uh, this is very special also because you can you can ride through medieval landscape for over a week um, by staying in different villages every night and it's it's really is the, the best way of experiencing this um, this very special um, landscape and and the villages. Um, there also we have um, we have a gypsy community in that village, uh, which um, which we support and we deal with in an interesting way. You know the gypsies in in Romania have a have a very difficult situation. Actually, there might be some of them coming all the way to Sweden. Um, but we, we found out, we, we noticed that um, the gypsies, uh, especially the kids, are very fond of horses. And um, with all, all our horses, we just started a talent program for children from the gypsy slum together with the, the school. So now we have almost a hundred children who in normal times, not in Corona times, of course, but um, they first go to school in the morning. Afterwards, they have to have extra homework in school. Then they come over to our, to our place. Uh, they get a, a warm meal. And then they get trained in riding and in voltage. And it went all the way. We started this five years ago. And now we started a, an extra school class with the, with the school in, in the next town um, for horse, a professional school for horse grooming. So in that village five years ago, there were incredible tensions between the gypsy community and the village community. And now, after five years of very hard work with over 100 children, we managed to appease uh, these tensions and actually more and more children of the gypsy community are now choosing um, an education and to, to get into the professional life. So I just tell you this because I think it's, um, it's a very important part. It's, it doesn't really have to do anything with, uh, with our tourism or with, uh, with, with receiving guests, but it, it depicts that um, we have a very holistic approach to um, our activities here in, in Transylvania. And this is all made possible by, by receiving guests in our in our houses and in, in our villages. We also have over 30 employees who work uh, directly with, with our guests. And uh, so this is, this is basically it. I mean, it's, uh, if you see the background here, um, it, is a, um, it is a very authentic uh, way. The guests we receive here never have the impression of being in a of being a tourist it's much more like being transported into a, a novel of Tolstoy or, or Dostoevsky 
or we have a lo we have a local one also, Count Banfi, who wrote the Transylvanian trilogy. If you are looking for literature for um, falling asleep at, uh, in the evening, um, have a look at Banfi Miklos Transylvania trilogy. He's been preaching uh, for the last over 40 years um, about um, how people and mankind should uh, live in harmony together with nature. And uh, when, uh, when he came here, he simply remained in awe and discovered that there was actually a, um, a country and, a, and a, a region in Europe which was completely um, in line with what he was preaching and what he was trying to, uh, to, to, to show to everybody was uh, basically a way of life um, which uh, he would embrace. And, and that's why he's coming back uh, every single year. I mean, for the, almost the last 20 years, he's, he's the most, uh, most um, loyal uh, guest. Unfortunately, he should have come now also in, in two weeks time. But you might, have, you might know that he went through the, the virus itself. He got, he, got, uh, he got sick himself. And obviously he cannot, so all travel is, is now uh, impossible. Uh, my nine times great grandfather was also his nine times great grandfather, and he was descended. Uh, he he uh, founded the village of Zalan Patak, where now uh, the prince has his his own little property, and uh, he was a descendant of Vlad the Impaler, who was uh, the um, the basis for Bram Stoker's Dracula. What we really try to to provide here is um, the whole thing. So not only to be able to do wonderful hiking in cultural and natural landscapes, like for example, from a natural point of view, the gorge and, and the cave of the Pied Piper, that's very, very special, but also the hills uh, between the villages are very special and, and provide an experience that is um, basically, I guess, very difficult to get anymore in, in today's Europe but also um, to provide an accommodation that is simple, but um, that is really authentic and in a place where you do not feel as, as being in a hotel or in a, even in a pension. It is really very much like a, well, almost like a, a travel in time. The castle right now is a, is a museum. Um, so we try to, to uh, provide the harmony of, uh, of past, past ages. Thank you, Lara Vedera. All the best. We fick en känsla av hur det är att bo på Karnoki guesthouses och nu tackar vi för er uppmärksamhet. Stort tack och vi håller kontakten. När ni har tid är ni alltid välkomna på våra resa hem från avsnitt och hoppas att vi också kan ses snart i verkligheten. Ta hand om er. Här är det